What's going on, Reef Builders? I am Jake Adams, coming back to you with a long-awaited update on this uh, very interesting and unique uh, experiment of a reef aquarium. So as of the shooting of this video, uh, this tank has been coasting for nine months. Now, if you haven't seen the setup videos, those are gonna be all in the same playlist with this one video. But in case you don't know, this tank was set up in one single day. Everything, sand, rock, fish, corals, all in one single day back in November 17th, putting us at nine months uh, since this tank was set up. And uh, as of this filming, still have not put my hand in the tank and I have not done a water change and I have done no dosing. So the previous video, I think, um, really kind of uh, focused and addressed a lot of the concepts for why this tank is doing so well. I've been struggling to come up with uh, what to say about this tank since it's been coasting so well for so long. And um, you know, in some ways, this particular aquarium has kind of made me not completely overturn the things that I think and believe about uh, reef aquariums in general, but just maybe some things to consider uh, down the road for some future setups. So <clears throat> the corals are doing really, really well. And I think one of the only small problems in this tank is uh, actually coral warfare. So there is a little bit of stinging going on. Um, mostly the gold torch coral is starting to sting the Acan Echinata that we put there. Um, there will, and as many of you mentioned, as many of you commented, uh, the green star polyp definitely uh, is outpacing a lot of the other corals. So there was a Blastomusa right there and the green star polyp just totally Totally overgrew it. Not the biggest deal because that was a, a fragged piece, but um, so coral stinging is a, a little bit of a concern in this aquarium. In my top 10 tips for this kind of nano reef tank, in the previous video, I mentioned how little feeding I was doing. So I have increased the feeding a little bit, but I realized um, kind of retroactively that the minimal feeding and the minimal uh, leftover waste, I mean, as you can see, the fish have definitely grown. They're a lot bigger than when we put them in here. Um, since I've increased the feeding, I've noticed just a little bit more robustness from, there's just a couple small Aptasia, I mean, just two or four. I, it, it varies, because there is one peppermint shrimp in here, I think it's still in here. Um, so the extra feeding has definitely kind of brought on a little bit more of a small degree of flatworms. You can kind of see them here on the base and kind of in the shadows. And there's a little bit more here on this side, but because I'm still feeding very minimally, um, they're not growing out of control. And same thing with the Aptasia. Um, and with this particular reef tank, it, it reflects larger reef tanks in so many ways. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, is that if you have 15, 20 corals, you're kind of guaranteed to have 18, let's say if you have 20 corals, 15 of them are gonna be thriving, three or four are gonna be okay, and one or two are going to either struggle or just not be their best. And for this tank, it has, always been the Duncan coral at the top. So I'm thinking about switching him out or maybe putting a coral up there that can resist the encroaching uh, green star polyp. Um, so the reason I started increasing the feeding um, was because the coral mass had grown to such a, a size, um, particularly the euphilias, the two euphilias are really a lot bigger than they ever have been, and the two green star polyps, and the two soft corals on the edges. They are a lot bigger than the when we put them in here. Um, the two soft corals that haven't really grown that much are the sarcophytans, and we know those guys like a little bit more of a high nutrient situation because they just they just suck it right up. And the uh, striped candy coral, which is a 20 year old strain that I've been growing in all my reef tanks since I was about 17, 18, um, that thing has done really, really well. Um, one 
different in this particular aquarium that one thing that's changing ecologically is you'll start to see some spots of coralline on the back glass. Now, normally in, in conventional reef aquarium wisdom, that's a really good sign because, you know, kind of all want our rocks to be pink and we want anything that's, that's black plastic or white plastic or whatever it is, you, you know, we generally, we want that coralline algae growth. But since I don't do water changes on this tank and I don't dose it, I am starting to think about the mineral and trace element demands of the coralline algae because as that coralline algae mass gets bigger, it is going to compete directly with the needs of the corals. And like I said, I'm not dosing this tank, I'm not doing anything to this tank. So um, in this kind of balanced environment, that's not a concern, but if the entire back and all the rocks were covered with coralline algae, um, that would be something to take notice of because the coralline algae could probably rapidly reduce the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium uh, needs of this particular tank and take away from the corals that were um, actually trying to grow. So some of you who might be watching this video and this is the first introduction you have to this aquarium, you might be asked, why aren't you doing water changes? Why aren't you topping off the aquarium? And you know, the simple answer is, is this is kind of an experiment. We're at nine months since setting this tank up in one single day. I've not put my hands in it. And it's just, compared to all the other reef tanks I have in here, this tank is so luscious. This, the corals are so healthy. Um, and if there's one thing that I would like to change and probably will change in the near future is the return pump. Now, the return pump is totally, absolutely fine and adequate for the needs of this particular aquarium. But I really don't want to add a second pump. And so I feel like once I get to the one year mark, I'm really going to mess with this tank and probably throw everything out of whack. But I, I, it's 2020 and it is getting to the point where it would be, it would be a nice luxury, right? Not a must have, but a nice luxury to have a controllable return pump, maybe even programmable so that some of the times it's pumping a lot faster than normal, just to give it a little bit more of that flush, a little bit more of that, um, a little bit more intense filtration. So um, yeah, I know there's not as much meat to this particular video as there has been in the previous update, which was at the six month mark. But yeah, just kind of wanted to reassure everybody that uh, all the corals in here are still doing very well, that uh, Duncan is, you know, it's kind of all right. He's lost a coralite, but that was a, a defect in the beginning. That's not something that happened in this our particular aquarium. And the increased, increased feeding definitely has fertilized uh, the corals that are doing well. You see the um, prism favia, which is goniastria, the acan pachycepta right there in the middle. Everything's just still really bushy and lush. Um, the one coral that's pretty much kind of stagnated would be the trachophilia right here, that little green guy, um, because they really want kind of a higher nutrient and possibly lower light environment. So. Um, I don't know what else to say about this aquarium. Uh, I really, really just want to have it on my uh, resume that once upon a time I set up a tank in one day and let it go for a whole year before doing anything and it was actually quite of a looker of an aquarium. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna make it to the 12 months mark before this tank gets moved to a different location and I give it a little bit of more attention. But like I said, this, <clears throat> this one day setup experiment coupled with not touching it at all is uh, really giving me some food for thought as far as how to approach uh, some of the other aquariums under my care and how to set up aquariums in the future. So, um, like I said, there's already a lot of videos on this tank. There's five videos on the complete setup and at least two, maybe three updates before this one. They're gonna be all on a playlist um, down in the description below. So, if you have any questions about this tank or something that I maybe n have not addressed yet, um, go ahead and pop those in the comments down below. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a like and if you want to see more content like this especially when I build my next tank taking into consideration some of the things I've learned from this aquarium um, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so thanks for tuning into this video and we'll catch you guys on the next one bye